plus 100 <coughs> PC means we take this subtract this so that should give you 1.5 and an I negative J and we're looking at 0 minus 15 so negative 15 J which means the length of this is 1.5 square negative 1 square negative 15 square and that should give us the actual force vector that's going to be 9.929i negative 6.619j negative 19.286k so we have everything we need we got those two position vectors we got the actual force vector so the first one is a determinant you have i j and k first row rac or rab that's going to be 0 0 15 then we have the force which is 9.929 negative 6.619 then we have negative 19 point on uh, 99 point 286 that's one of those another one is another determinant you have i j and k that's the first row now we need r a c so you have 1.5 negative 1 and a 0 that's from here then the force again so you get 9 point 929 6.619 negative 99.286 so that's just a simple cross products between vectors r and <coughs> vectors f <coughs> then this one by itself should come out to be 99.3 i plus 149j I mean actually what you're going to do is you're going to take this and this use this so it will be 15 times this times this minus this times this times minus 1 so that should give you this value then when you go through with this it should be identical as 19 99.3 plus 149 times j. So, I mean, you do have to go through the expansion of that determinant to find the values here. So, what you notice is that whether you choose the position vector RAB or you choose the position vector RAC, either one of the two your final answer has to be the same so this by itself is the x component this is the y component so if you really need the magnitude for ma then you have to go through the square root of 99.3 square plus 149 square plus a zero square. That will give you the magnitude then the directions. You will have alpha, you will have beta and then you are going to have gamma. So that's cosine inverse 99.3 divided by the magnitude which is ma. You are going to find this here. Then you have cosine inverse 149 divided by ma then you're going to have cosine inverse 0 over ma and that will be 90 degrees so once you get the actual vector then you can find the magnitudes and you can find the angles and <coughs> as I said before 
then if you have a 3D problem, then use vector formulation. Because when you have 3D problems, it's easier to write the position vectors and the force vectors. I mean, like for that problem, it's not easy to find the force magnitude and the perpendicular distance t. You can't do that. So for these cases, that would be the choice. Now your problem set, 